friends welcome to my channel my name is Wolo I want to say a very big thank you to everyone who have subscribed to my channel and have seen my videos it's a very hot weather outside and um, yes so I'm taking advantage of the weather we are fully I would say we are fully in summer because it's um, today was today is minus 10 not minus sorry I'm thinking of winter today is actually 30 degrees so the weather is very 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 hot like everywhere is very hot so yeah so i'll be talking about why i chose manitoba as a province why did i why did i decide to um, land in manitoba as a province and choose manitoba as my uh, home i would say home for now because this is where i live um, so a big background story of myself you know, when I talked about my Canada immigration story, I mentioned that um, I was working in the oil and gas sector. So I and my husband we were both working in the oil and gas sector. And um, we got our visa in February of 2016. And um, we were finding it difficult making a decision on which province to land because at that time, the oil and gas industry was having a serious downturn. There were a serious series of layoffs. And our initial plan was to land in Calgary. So, and Calgary is, um, is one of the cities in Alberta, and Alberta is an oil and gas province in Canada. So, our plan was to actually land in Calgary. That was where we wanted to go because we were stuck with which province to go. In fact, um, we got advice that we shouldn't land in Calgary at all, at all, at all. That was in 2016. And the, the advice that the person gave to us was that there were a lot of people who were um, stuck in Calgary, a lot of people had lost their jobs in the oil and gas sector and were moving out of Calgary in their droves. People were selling their houses and moving out looking for opportunities. We were also thinking of going to Edmonton and the information we got was that the people who were leaving Calgary were leaving Calgary from Calgary to Edmonton. So it's like those of us who are new immigrants, why go to where you will start struggling with people who are out of jobs and people who already have the Canadian experience. So that was the advice we got that we shouldn't go to, um, we shouldn't land in Calgary. The next option was Toronto and Saskatchewan. Those were the two options. Manitoba was never in the plan. It was never in our plan to land in Manitoba. Saskatchewan and Ontario were the next uh, options. And then I called somebody else again. That's um, actually my sister-in-law. In, in Ontario and she told us the truth she said she sees a lot of new immigrants struggling and suffering in Ontario and trying to find their way in Ontario that although Ontario is more and more diversified she wouldn't want us to come to Ontario and then start struggling that it's better we go to a province where the population is not much and where we can settle down easily and um, get something doing and thrive in so she told us not to come to Toronto. So Toronto was now out of the way. So, so the last option was Saskatchewan. And Saskatchewan, I had somebody there too. And that's my sister's um, in-law. I, I tried to reach him, but he was not picking his call. He wasn't, you know, forthcoming in response. And time was going and I needed, we needed to buy our tickets to come and explore. In fact, the plan was to just come, land, and then go back and start planning to come back and maybe i'll give another story of why we even decided to stay back and cancel our tickets that's the story for another day so basically what happened was the person that um i was supposed to talk to in saskatchewan to give me an idea he was he's living in regina saskatchewan he was supposed to you know brief me on what to expect when i come to saskatchewan because saskatchewan also part of it is uh, oil and gas and then um I wanted, we wanted advice on the job market because you know, every immigrant, the first thing that comes to your mind is the job. You wouldn't want to leave your comfort zone and then come to Canada and start struggling. So you want to know what the job market is like before you, you know, leave your home country. So we wanted to know what the job market was like in Saskatchewan, the oil and gas market in Saskatchewan, and he didn't respond to us. And time was just going. This was uh, uh, March, April. Time was just going, and I was like. We needed to really get a proper information so i searched again and i found a friend of mine who had immigrated earlier uh, to manitoba in fact um i spoke to someone else again and discovered that british columbia also has 
um, some part of oil and gas in British Columbia. So, but the advice we got was Vancouver is quite expensive. It's a no-go area. It's not where you want to go and waste all your money in rent, in uh, living, and at the end of the day, you don't get a meaningful job. Although the weather was beautiful, or the weather is beautiful in Vancouver, as like um, they don't have brutal winters like this the prairie region has but in terms of cost of living is extremely high like that of new york and um the advice we got was we shouldn't go there so now we're stuck with only um manitoba and saskatchewan and the person that was supposed to respond to me in saskatchewan did not respond to me in saskatchewan it's only the person in manitoba that responded to me and he told i, I was asking him what the job market was like in Manitoba what can one do if person if somebody lands especially for those of us who are coming from the technical side so um, the advice he gave to us was that we should look for something that can be transitional that one can do and then you can easily move from there to your desired career that Manitoba is more like um, a, a, a province that is friendly for for new immigrants who want to start their life on a quiet pace and um, then build yourself from there and if you decide if you decide that you are you have really gotten enough momentum then you can now move to the province you desire you know so that was what the person told me and he was the only one that responded to me and i had to do my research what's the economy like in manitoba what are they known for is it a province that i can easily get a job is it somewhere that is easily livable and another major factor for me was the lifestyle i i, I um back in nigeria i grew up in port harcourt i worked in lagos i also worked um in abuja and uh, i experienced the kind of living in three of these cities and lagos is a no-no for me in terms of the kind of um, lifestyle, waking up early in the morning to try to beat traffic to get to work and stuff like that. It was a no-no for me and I told myself that if I'm going to come to Canada, I'll try as much as possible to avoid cities that have population and that have so much traffic. And that was one deciding factor for me, apart from the one that my sister-in-law my sister -in -law told me, not told us not to uh, bother ourselves coming to um, uh, Toronto because of the struggles a lot of new immigrants face and um, traffic was a deciding factor for me i like the slow pace of living for for people who live in abuja anybody who has lived in abuja you understand what it is i have lived in abuja and i love it so that kind of slow pace living where you have 30 minutes within 30 minutes you can get to your destination within 45 minutes you can get to your destination you don't you're not experiencing any traffic and the economy is, is stable so that was the major deciding factor for me. Manitoba has um, a stable economy. It is not um, affected by um, the downturn of anything, just like Alberta, where if the oil and gas price is up, there is lots of jobs and when the oil and oil and gas prices or when the oil market is down a lot of people start losing their jobs so it's a cycle it's a cycle that has been going on for years and this last cycle was very very bad until now the economy in alberta is still struggling to come up because they are 100 percent dependent on oil and gas and um, because we don't we didn't want a situation where we'll come and start waiting for a good job and find it difficult to settle and you know still doing survival jobs or transitional jobs they don't call it survival jobs they call it transitional jobs so uh, we now decided okay we would land in manitoba and we landed in manitoba and yours truly manitoba has been very good the only thing i know is that the weather is very bad compared to toronto uh, and vancouver or british columbia where you have a milder I would say the winters are mild. Every other aspect in terms of, you know, getting a job, like I mentioned, the housing price is cheap. You can rent a one-bedroom apartment for eight hundred dollars, a one-bedroom condo for eight hundred dollars. But in Toronto, you're going to get that one bedroom for one thousand five hundred dollars. I mean, as a new immigrant, you would not want to come and start spending so much money when you are not even sure of your income. And those are the factors. And there are a lot of government. Um, subsidies in place that Manitoba has put in place for new immigrants like um, the Manitoba Rent Assist 
and uh, a lot of things a lot of things that the government has put in place to make new immigrants settle in faster and within three months within six months a lot of new immigrants they get jobs even if not in their desired field at least but it's a stepping stone to where they want to be and compared to you know going to any of these bigger provinces where you you are struggling and at the end of the day it's like you left your comfort zone to to an environment where you are in competition with new immigrants from different parts of the world you know that's the one thing about toronto people who immigrate to toronto there are so many and you're you are, you are in competition with people from China, you are in competition with people from India, you are in competition with people from Bangladesh, Pakistan, a lot of brilliant people. You are in competition with people from the UK, people from Germany, people from France, people from Vietnam, people from Japan. You are in competition with so many people and then you start finding yourself struggling to fit in and you know struggling to get things done. Another deciding factor that made us choose to um, land in Manitoba was the aspect of supporting the application of family members you know that was another major uh, deciding factor apart from the fact that Calgary was a no-go area in terms of because of the job market as at then I, I was looking at okay let's um, you know let's make the best of this whole immigration thing let's not look like okay because we want our careers to be in a, in a certain province and since we cannot get into into our careers in that province let's look at making the best out of um, this whole immigration thing so I decided okay let me just land in um, let's just land in Manitoba so that we can use that opportunity to help you know family members who plan to come to Canada so this is why I I encourage people when they ask me please can you advise on which province to land I know Toronto is very attractive Toronto is more diversified in fact in Toronto when they hear you speak they don't they know which country you're from they don't they every everybody knows everybody's accent in Toronto because it's more diversified there is no um, community or there is no group that is more um, do, that dominates Toronto compared to uh, Manitoba like in Manitoba here the Filipinos are more in Manitoba compared to uh, Toronto in in Calgary the Indians are more in Calgary in British Columbia the Chinese are more in British Columbia but in Toronto is more diversified so back to what I was saying why I chose Manitoba was because of the uh, the advantage of supporting the applications of family members I, I just thought about it and I'm like okay if we can't land if we can't go to Calgary and start living in Calgary or you know um, settle in Calgary why not settle in a province that offers the opportunity of supporting the application of a family member so that was another factor that made us choose um, Manitoba any family member who is in Manitoba can just you know support the application of anybody and bring their family members in without any occupation in demand list the occupation in demand list just started in 2018 but prior to that people could just come in without um, this high score there, i think there was no restrict there was there wasn't actually a list for scores and stuff like that you could just put in your paper application that you have a family member you want to bring into canada and the process goes through and your family member is here so that was a major factor i thought about and then i decided okay let's let's stay in manitoba and see how we can help support the application of family members so that's why i want to encourage anybody who plans to land in canada if you're not coming under the provincial nomination uh if you're coming under express entry and you have already gone through the whole phase i will encourage you yes toronto looks like that shining star but you will live in toronto you will not have so much money in your pocket except you're in the it industry if, you, if your profession is into if your if your profession is the IT is in the IT sector, then Toronto is good for you. But if your profession is not in the IT sector, then you can live anywhere in Canada. And I encourage you to land in Manitoba, especially if you know you have the you ha, you can you have to support the application of so many family members. If you know that your family members will be depending on you for a lot of things, it's better for you to come and land in Manitoba and bring them here so that they, everybody can live together. And the reason why the Filipinos are more in Manitoba is because of this family um, family support, family application support. That's why a lot of them are here. A lot of them are in, are in Manitoba because they were able to support the applications of their family members. And they keep 
increasing in population whereas um our community the nigerian community we are still struggling you know in terms of population to come up in a in a particular community in canada so this is for anybody planning to land if you know your um your application is through the normal express entry you're not coming through the provincial nomination i strongly suggest is a suggestion is my opinion you might decide on what you want to do um, i strongly suggest that you land in manitoba for the sake of helping at least one family member like i like i said i like to do things where i know i'll be helping people and paying it forward um for people to be, be for it to be beneficial to so many people so you can be more like the joseph of your family i met a nigerian who has been here since 1976 and i tell you when he came he brought in about seven or eight of his brothers and all of them are doing fantastically well in manitoba it's a very popular family in manitoba here and they are doing fantastically well and that's why manitoba um provincial nomination aspect is very strong in terms of family support because they know that a family member supporting the application of another family member will make the population of manitoba grow first so the major deciding factor was the cost of living for me and i didn't want the stress of you know living in a place where i'll be taking one hour commute to work and one hour commute back i'm not i'm not in lagos for christ's sake i can't come to canada and start suffering um, traffic issues and the high cost of living issues in canada and then have nothing in my pocket and then when my family members call me back home i'll be telling them i beg sorry i'm sorry i don't have money okay so Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.